One of the things that I usually try to get people to understand is that there's still so much to explore. There's still so much that we don't know about the life on our planet. Um, and so that's a really important thing, I think, for people to, to understand. Well, nowadays, the techniques for collecting specimens is much better than it was back 100 years ago. In many ways, it's very similar. But nowadays, we have ways of bringing those specimens up and, and fixing them and preserving them so that they will be stable until they get back to the museum. These specimens are preserved for scientific research now and in the future. I think a lot of times people just think about the here and now and don't think about what might be important for study 100 or 150 or 300 years from now, just because the time scale that we live on is so fast. So the Museum of Comparative Zoology, in my mind, is just what the name implies. Zoology, the study of animals. Comparative, we're comparing animals here in the museum. And that varies from sponges, to corals, to birds, to different types of mammals, to snakes, all different types of animals. And so the MCZ, to me, is a natural history museum that houses diversity, biodiversity, the types of animals that you find all over the world. We're a museum for comparing animals to be used by researchers from all over the world, to be seen by the young students that come from different classes and schools, to people who have come back to the museum year after year after year just to see the different animals that we have on display and on exhibit. My name is Jennifer Winifred Trimble and I'm a curatorial assistant and you are here at the Museum of Comparative Zoology within invertebrate zoology, and we are in the ground floor of the collection space. We act as a repository for biological samples that are preserved in a variety of ways so that researchers and zoologists can come and study what we have in our holdings for their research, either across time scale or to look at variation among species. Nautilus will either use a slurp or a grab to sample these specimens aboard ship, bring them up from the sea floor, and then preserve them in containers which are then shipped to invertebrate zoology here at the MCZ. Things that are collected aboard ship are put directly into the preservation type that they stay in here, and that's of paramount importance to what we do because the less transition you have from preservation type the longer that the specimen will last in storage. And it, we want things to last indefinitely. And so the better you prepare them on ship, the easier it is to transition them to the museum here. We generally get them packed up into boxes and they come in either falcon tubes or heat sealed bags with the sample code on the outside of the vial. Samples can be preserved in a variety of ways. Some of them are within ethanol. Some of our specimens are preserved on microscope slides, and those would be things like tissue samples or even small pieces of coral. And we also have things that are preserved dry, and those are either in this area or in a separate building. We are in a building called the Northwest Building. So this building, this room that we're in, is most suitable for housing dry preserved specimens. What is going on now today is unprecedented in terms of the type of material that we're getting back, in terms of the condition and the way it's preserved. So we all can make estimates of how many specimens we have in the museum. And I think the estimates are somewhere around 21 million specimens. These are specimens that are important for people who are trying to understand biodiversity and try to make decisions about these areas that are, that are in the world where these particular animals are found. And so this is why cruises and expeditions like the Nautilus going to areas where people haven't been to or haven't been to in a very long time. So now we're continuing to document what is in those areas. The next step is to then database these and they're put into our online repository which is called MCZ Base. It's a publicly available database. They're given catalog numbers to keep track of each individual sample and then uploaded to this online database so that researchers can access them on the internet. So it's not always practical or possible to just go out and say I'm going to collect more of this material. So having 
specimens in museums is incredibly important. And in terms of curation, that's incredibly important because you need the material to be in a condition that is useful to research. You know, it's hard to know what you don't know, always. Um, but it's even sometimes difficult to know what we do know. And that comes into trying to understand everything, all the science that has happened before you came along as a scientist. So you have to go back through literature that might date back to the 1700s. So it is fundamentally important to have access to the literature. And repositories like this library, for example, is, you know, they're very important. This is something that I have been sequencing as part of my research on other snails and slugs in a different group. The purple blob or the purple orb was exciting because it was a very beautiful shade of purple and it was illuminated when the lights were on it. Ideally, when you're describing a new species, you want to have as many specimens of that as possible because that will be the only way that you can get a sense of variation in that species. But at the same time, it was enough to put it in one of my analyses and confirm that it is in fact a velutinid snail rather than a pleurobranch, which is in the group that I actually work on most of the time. When one particular species gets hyped up, it's good. We obviously want people to get excited about biology and about specimens, but at the same time, researchers that might be interested in these specimens are working on a lot of other things, and sometimes there are other things that are a bit more pressing in terms of their current research or you know, what grants they might have. We have many, many specimens that just sit on our shelves that are uncatalogued that haven't been actually entered into our database. We know that it's a sponge. We know that it's a nophiroid brittle star. We know that it's a, a gastropod of some sort. But to be able to take the time and to have the knowledge to figure out exactly what species that is, it requires a lot of expertise. And this is where we are calling out for other researchers from outside of the museum to use our specimens for their research. So we've been working with the Nautilus team to identify these people who may be interested in working on these particular animals. By putting names on them, now we can document where animals are found in this world called biodiversity and understanding what are animals are found in those particular areas. And that's really what we do here. That's the purpose of our museum, is to document biodiversity.